So we're talking about communication, which has already come up several times. And David, you'd have already mentioned that communication doesn't necessarily come naturally. It's something that needs to be learned. We perhaps know how to communicate to our circle of, of colleagues that we normally talk to, but talking to other groups is something that has really to be learnt and understood. Helder, why don't you tell us what it takes? Well, we all know like uh, if, the, if a seminar or a lecture is going to be bad in five seconds, right? Microfo your <laughs> microphone, I think, is not on. Is, can we fix the microphone? Can, I? can you hear me now? No. So can we have someone it's to do the microphone, please? difficult, I think. It should be working. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> communication, eh? <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> the communication panel. Okay, but again. Hey, great. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's exactly Thank what I was talking. I was talking <laughs> about. So like in five seconds, you can tell if a seminar or a lecture is gonna be bad, right? But when we are at the stage or writing a paper, we actually don't see this happening because uh, I think that in the PhD we are not training enough in this the in this kind of skills. And Richard Famous already said that uh, scientists are storytellers, and we need to to know how to tell a good story too communicates uh, our results. Mm. And for that, I think we need empathy. We need to put ourselves in the position of whoever's gonna receive this uh, message. What, they, what do we want them to, to take an action, inspiration, you know? So uh, I think uh, we have to change the, the way we communicate and the all, only way is uh, through training, That's a specialized very, training. It's a very interesting word to bring into the discussion, empathy. Yeah. Um, not one that is so often heard in, co in, in connection with communication, but obviously deeply important. Um, not, um, as you say, about it is what I want to communicate, but it's what you need to know. Yes. Difficult. Christiane. Oh, yes. Um, I think uh, there are many skills that are requested from scientists nowadays more and more. And sometimes we are not well prepared to do everything, you know. Uh, we know that there are, there are many students here, I'm sure all of them know that there are great researchers who are not so good professors in class. And uh, there are great professors who are not well-recognized researchers. And um, in what regards communication, um, outside the university or outside the research institutions, it even more challenging. And we are not well prepared to do so many times, so we have to learn. During the pandemic, it was a great example. I work at Phil Cruz, as well, the Cruz Foundation. And from night to day, we had to talk to many different people. Our researchers had to talk to the media and to different social groups. And it was really challenging. Many of them turned out to be great communicators, and they didn't know that, <laughs> but others did not have neither the original talent nor the, the had been prepared to do so. So we have to learn in our daily lives and sometimes people from the communication field can help, but not every institution is prepared to do so, especially in the South countries. It, it's a pretty difficult thing to sort out that, that the expert may not be the best communicator but we kind of live in a world where we expect the expert to be front and center. You know, that's the person who's out there talking. So it's, a, it's hard to, to promote other people to the point of being the, the spokespeople. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, that, that's 100% correct. You, you know, one of the interesting things about winning the Nobel Prize is you get thrust into this limelight, mm -hmm. and then in, people ask you to become Wikipedia and explain <laughs> everything to them. <laughs> um, but the communication thing, is important. I, when I moved to um, America, to the US, with a strong Scottish accent, no one could understand anything <laughs> I would say. So I quickly learned I had to communicate, learn how to communicate. And communication is extraordinarily important. My other story around that was when I found out I had to make this Nobel lecture. And on YouTube, I went to look at other people's Nobel lectures, and there would be people had a million views. And I realized if I gave my regular chemistry talk, a million people were going to be very disappointed. You know, this was going to be not so good. So I spent so much time 
trying to get it to make it accessible for people. And part of it was empathetic, but part of it was selfish because I didn't want to think we'd spent all this time in the lab for the last 25 years to then blow it or mess it up <laughs> when we had the chance to actually communicate it to a broader audience. So I think this, this idea about getting the information out, we have to care as much about the communication as we do about the research. Because if we do all the research and no one understands it, what was the point of doing it? Mm. And I suppose you have a particular challenge with chemistry because... <laughs> 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 In general, the public out there sometimes think of chemistry as being bad, you know, uh, oh. pollutants, things you don't want. How, much chemist how, mu how many chemicals do you want in your food? None. <laughs> right. No, you're, you're 100. The, the PR, the public relations around chemistry is horrible, right? Physics, you think of the, the, big, the big bang or black holes. Biology, you think of medicine. Chemistry, you think of chimneys mm. and smoke. <laughs> um, I always tell my wife when I'm sitting on an aeroplane, and I don't want to talk to the person next to me, and they ask me, what do you do? I say, I'm a chemist. But, <laughs> but if I do want to talk to them, I tell them I do catalysis. And they're like, oh, that's interesting. And so, but the, the words, they're, they're the same field, but the words are different, and it comes down to the communication. I think in chemistry, we do have a problem, and we do have to overcome that problem if we're going to make people care. It really is true. Thank you. Um, communication is changing quite fast. And uh, certainly, there are so many more channels for getting messages out, but that presents its own new challenges. Um, how do, well, first of all, I should ask you, are you all three active on social media? Helder? Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> David? Yes. <laughs> Christiane? Not very much, <laughs> yes, a little bit. <laughs> okay, well, more, more than me anyway, I'm zero. Yeah. So, <laughs> What do you, I mean, there you're, you know, the, the people say that lies spread faster than truth, five times faster than truth on social media, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you, how do you approach that as a new communication medium? Well, uh, I think uh, we have to keep pace with the, the cultural shifts that happens. For example, we were in an information uh, economy. Then we became an attention economy where a lot of distractions, uh, you have a limited attention, but to endless uh, information. And now we're going to the AI economy, right? So uh, I think we, we have to, to, to deal with this saturation of information. So just providing accurate or information, scientific information, is not enough to really communicate well. You, you have sometimes to, to learn with people that do this, uh, such as marketers and people that social sociologists, to, to really like touch the emotions and, and, and try to to see what the person is going to benefit with this information, right? Red could be inspiration, could be uh, an action. And that's what I was mentioning about uh, the empathy. You know? And I think that regardless of uh, the age that we are, like, um, we, we, we have to uh, think about that all the time, like uh, uh, who's going to be the audience of uh, but uh, my social media is not for having millions of followers like Jacqueline is <laughs> just like uh, to talk uh, about my, uh, our science and not to, to be an influencer or, or anything. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Christiane. Oh, I think uh, I use some social media writing short tests and some pictures, but uh, nowadays communicating with the youth especially uh, they use much shorter videos and a uh, very fast way of communicating that sometimes is harder for some of us. I don't know, not everyone is able to be a YouTuber or a blogger, and so it's very challenging. Um, and also, I think speaking to the youth is very important through social media and also working with schools, you know. We have some programs directed to that as the former panels are approaching. As um, working with teachers and working with children and the youth is really important nowadays to uh, make science more inclusive and to let people be interested in science and all the possibilities. Yeah, uh, and that's, uh, that's a very positive way to look at it. I mean, it's a little bit of a battleground out there. That you're <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. I, I tell young professors. I would not want to be an assistant professor right now because of the social media component. There's so many people fighting for the oxygen in the room. 
And it, there are so many people who try and make up their mind about, for example, what's happening in science through reading social media, which is a really, really bad idea. I mean, that's not where you should be thinking about science. However, I do think social media is valuable where you can get to understand the way people think and the way people are and who the human being is behind the science. And that's the way I try to use it, not always successfully. But I think it's, it's kind of, social media you can use for lots of different applications. From, from my viewpoint, it can be valuable if it's used to allow people more access to each other, to see who okay. they are without actually having to have met each other. Mm. Thank you. Now, that turned out to be a perfect segue, finding out about each other. This, this session is about communication. My Brit Moser has just empowered you all as agents of change. I would like you to take a couple of minutes to talk to each other. I'd like you, please, to turn to your neighbor, if you want, <laughs> and spend one minute just saying what you think is most needed if we're going to try and get the best out of science. And then your neighbor could take one minute to tell you what they think is most needed. You don't have to do this. If you don't want to do it, you can spend two minutes checking your phone. It's fine. <laughs> But we're going to turn the lights up in the room for you to talk to each other, and we're just going to talk to each other, turn our microphones off. You've got two minutes, one minute each. Please go ahead. What was the question? Okay, I think, I think we're back here on stage. I'm sorry to draw it to a close. I can't tell you how lovely it is to hear the bubble of your voices from stage. It's really nice. Thank you. Congratulations to you all. Yeah. So we just have a few minutes left, and we wanted to talk about the, the, the skepticism. Um, that we have to battle, that the tools that are used to um, send out the nice information about science are exactly the same tools that people are using to combat science. So how do we deal with that? How do we cope? David? Well, I would say the first part is awareness. I think all scientists are aware of the fact that there's this skepticism that's becoming more and more prevalent through social media and from other components. And I think this continued approach of getting everyone to talk about why science is actually the top of a pyramid. And I think you should, the, the phrase that you just said while we were sitting here, you should explain that, which I think is perfect. Yes, uh, uh, Professor Moser mentioned the parallel between art and science. 
And uh, if you take the pyramids of needs, shelter, water, food, money for a barbecue, like, you are going to see that art is going to be on the top of the pyramids. Only when you satisfy all the needs, then you can think about art. So science thinks the same uh, with science. So they, they think it's science is a luxury, when, when actually science is the bottom of the, of the pyramids. And how can we tell the, the, the person how important this is for everyone? And what worries me is that uh, the same way people can uh, do fake art, so fake money, with AI, for example, it's going to be very easy to, to, to spread misinformation with uh, AI. So we are going to have to battle the, mm. the fake news with the, the true science. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Build the pyramid. Yes, please. Uh, yes, uh, and a good example is the issue of vaccines. In Brazil, for example, we have a huge national immunization program that was very successful since the 70s you have this program and you have the unified health system and people usually believed in vaccines in brazil there were had no problems with anti-vax movements and so on and so forth or excitation to vaccinate and recently in the last few years and during the pandemic and Unfortunately, there were some national authorities that were speaking against vaccines and so on and so forth. So, and some groups, some right groups organized it. We began to have some hesitation to vaccinate. Mm. And so this is very worrying because we spent like 40 years and people had this view of vaccine as a public good, as a right of citizenship and as a public good. And so how this becomes so... So we have to say that this is... Well, it's because the, the word that is used, at least in the US and in Europe, is elitism, elitism, where they suggest that science or scientists are elite elitists. And this is exactly the opposite of what science are, scientists are. Scientists are the working class, noble people who care about the community and are doing everything for the community. They're not sitting on top of the mountain, we're sitting at the bottom of the mountain trying to make sure everyone can get to the top of the mountain. That's who we are. Thank you. That truly is a great message to get out, yes. Well said, thank you. I think probably that is a good point to stop on, that positive idea and, the, and, and, this, and this word empathy, which I think is so important to introduce into the discussion. Thank, thank you very much to the three of you. Now you, thank you, yes. Thank you.